Thank by you. a rare treat for which we are prepared to give thanks. Maureen Forrester is with us tonight, one of the world's foremost contraltos and a distinguished Canadian. So what is a contralto? A low woman. I mean, a low voice woman. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always been a contralto? Yes. My mother was a contralto too. And you were born with yeah. it. Maureen Forrester yeah. will be with us tonight and she will also be singing live. Stay with us. Well, welcome to our program. I hope you've had a happy Thanksgiving with friends and family. We are certainly looking forward to our Thanksgiving evening here tonight. We have with us Maureen Forrester, one of the world's leading contraltos, a great and distinguished Canadian, and a woman who's got so darn much energy at 66. At 66. You're still I'm tearing still the around the country. <laughs> you still are. We have a real treat for you tonight. It's kind of the icing on your pumpkin pie. Maureen will be singing for us three songs live right here, and she will be accompanied by David Warwick. He is a pianist and composer, a very talented man in his own right, I'm sure, a name known to many of you. Thank you for being with us, David. Let's get right into this young lady at 66. You actually wanted to play basketball, not sing at yes, all. Yes, I did. <laughs> I, wanted, I was a good center forward. <laughs> I've got long legs and, you know, I can jump high. So, so what, it just wasn't on in that, no, uh, at that particular time? No, my mother time? wanted me to be a singer. My mother mm -hmm. sang in church choirs. Yes. And I'd come home and say, I'm going to be the center forward. I'm so excited for this game. She'd say, oh, you can't do that. I'd say, why not? She said, because I promised the Women's Christian Temperance Union you'd sing at their annual meeting, and they'd be all so disappointed you can't let them down. I mean, she had me do it, but I su maybe I wouldn't have been a singer if she hadn't done that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now, do, you, do you still love basketball? Do you go to the Raptors? Do you go and No, see? I love, I watch games in there, but I'm, all, you know, I'm on tour so much that yes. I don't get a chance to follow one team or the other. Now, your mother said that you actually hummed to yourself in the cradle. <laughs> probably inside of her. I don't know. She's because she sang. I probably sang a duet. <laughs> she sang to you all the time. Do you remember? I mean, do you actually have a recollection of that? No, but she she sang in church choirs, yeah. as my two elder sisters did, and then my brother. But they they all, you know, it was the first the Second World War came along, and then right. my my three two sisters and brother were off doing war work and being in the army and whatever. So you and I was left at home. To sing. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm eternally grateful to yeah. her because I love to sing. But uh, I don't care what I sing. I sing everything. You know, I don't, I'm not what, a, what an do opera you sing singer. I'm not a leader singer. In the shower, I'm assuming you do. Come to me, my melancholy baby. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Do you really, though? I mean, do you no, walk I around sing. the house singing? Yeah, my children often used to say to me when they were young, Mom, knock it off. <laughs> but what I was really doing was. Pulling out drawers of something I have to sing a week from now, I wanted to refresh my memory to bring and it back into it. the conscious, you know. <laughs> How many songs do you suppose are in your brain somewhere? Mm, I don't know. Could, it could easily be a thousand. That you would know lyrics? Yeah, well, you, yeah, know, well uh, you know, you bring certain things to the fore. Yes. And that's the secret of, of having a good memory. Don't try to keep it all right there because you, you get flustered. Right, so, so file you, you, it away. And you, yeah, and you change your programs. So I, certain programs, I know what they are. But if I'm not, I ask it, David, what am I singing today? <laughs> <laughs> and he tells you. And he tells me. <laughs> <laughs> but you have described this before, that actually when you get up to perform, it's almost like a, a spiritual experience for you. Something overtakes. Well, it's something, I don't want it to sound that quite that way, but I want to share something that I think is either funny or beautiful or wonderful that they might never have heard before and might, might walk out of the theater humming to themselves yeah. and say, I've got to get the music for that. I love that piece. You know? So you've never had a nervousness, that sense of getting up on stage and thinking, oh my God, I'm going to open my mouth and nothing will come out. Only once. Only once? It wasn't, it wasn't exactly nervous. It was an, somebody must have opened the door. You know how that... It takes your thoughts away. Yeah. And I was singing a song that was started, it was French. Je veux que le matin l'ignore le nom que j'ai dit. I wish that the, the morning would tell me the name I said during the night. And I said, je veux. Mon Dieu, je sais pas qu'est-ce que je veux. My God, I don't know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and did you say that? I said, yeah. I said, <laughs> je veux, I want. Mon Dieu. But I said it in French because it's on the French network. <laughs> now, you have actually told students that if they do forget a line, that's what you do. Just fake it. Fake it. Stick any word in. I mean, or compose, start composing. Don't sort of go, because then people start getting ner nervous and look down and think, did I pay to hear this? Is this going to be, what is it going to be? <laughs> so just give the weather report. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> sure. And enjoy yourself. 
Now, there was one point, a, a teacher who actually told you to stop singing for a while in order to even out your voice. What does that mean? Well, because it was the, I had, a, the first teacher I had was a lovely 80-year-old man. Mm -hmm. And um, he sort of knew how to bring the voice out, but didn't teach me how to make nuances mm -hmm. and how it's things, different weights and different colors. And um, so there was a, a point where I went to this new teacher, Bernard Diema, who's gone back to Holland, and he's a wonderful man. But I studied for about two years with him, and he was the one that introduced me to different colors, different sounds, different, you know, different approaches to things. Now, can you be more translate interesting. for those of us who cannot even sing the national anthem, just because we can't carry a tune, what do you mean colors in music? Well, you can sing a dark purple color. You know, it's a, the weight of the voice, mm -hmm. what you interject. And in the same range, you can sing a very light, wispy, fairy light song. It's, it's Yellow, deep. pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shimmering, you know. Do you imagine that in yes. your own mind's eyes, you say? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I think in color, yeah. I am so looking forward here now to listening to you sing and David perform Berceuse. 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 A Creole lullaby. Yes. All right. And this is something that you learned as a child. Did you only learn it when you... No. I learned it quite a bit later in life. It was just, it's a very pretty song. That I've, it's a lullaby. Yeah. And I like it, so I, I sing it quite often. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll have you carefully go over to the microphone so we don't lose not you tip here. over the water. Okay. David, are you ready? You're, you've tinkled the ivory. this way or that way? Either way. Okay. <laughs> Careful on the step. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Maureen Forrester singing. I will try it one more time. Berceuse. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. For Maureen Forrester's voice, we give thanks. We're going to take a little break and be back with more in just a moment. <laughs> Maureen Forrester is our guest tonight, and you've just heard her sing moments ago with the talents of David Work, along with her as well, accompanying her. Uh, with that lullaby. It is the strength of the music. You can actually feel it as you sit in a studio. How down deep do you go to find that? <laughs> well, you literally s start from where you s what you're sitting on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you, because you need to use your diaphragm to help support the sound, so that you must keep your shoulders and your lung space relaxed. So you've got to be able to so move you've got that. lots of breath, so that yeah. little muscle will push up that little extra bit of breath so you need. So many times when you're singing opera, mm -hmm. you're all decked out in these elaborate costumes. <laughs> and, and I don't know how anybody could breathe, let alone sing. Oh, there are lots of try-ons of the costumes. They, yeah. can't, they never could be too tight around the diaphragm. Yeah. Because you, that, although some singers like to push against that tightness. I don't like that, though. I like to feel to free. The, yeah, I don't mind how... Uh, now, if you were five foot nothing and weighed 85 pounds soaking wet, would you have the strength to do that? Yes. It, it's, it all depends on your training. You, know, you might not have a big voice like Ben Hepner if you yeah. were that little, but um, it's all in, all in, the, uh, all in the training. Uh, I think the most important thing you learn how to do as a singer is how to support the sound and how to breathe, how to pronounce Yes. Chinese even, you know. <laughs> no, the lullaby you just sang, now that's in French. That's in French. Yeah. Any, can you sing in any number of languages? Yes, I sing in German and I sing in Russian and I sing in um, Hebrew and uh, um, all Chinese. Do you I actually did, memorize uh, the uh, words or is it phonetic? <laughs> I went to China and of course with the Toronto <laughs> Symphony and they, so word came back, they'd love you to sing a Chinese encore. I said, wait a minute, I said, eat a lot of Chinese food. I don't know if I can do it. So I said, find me a one verse slow lullaby yes. and I'll make an attempt. So they sent me a three verse reasonably fast song. But you know, it endears you to the yeah. public because I think at one, the first, the first concert when we did, I, I made a mistake in one line and you could see people in the audience going, oh, what, so, but, you but laughing, what you've said. In, laughing be, inside, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you actually learn the words and you memorize them. Oh, yes. Do you have a special mind for that? It's just concentration. But I like languages. I, I grew yeah. up in Montreal, so French was my second language. Yeah. I learned German very easily. And, just, just check his heart. You know, and it's, it's all consonants. Now, it's you harder. said when you were up singing the lullaby that you actually picture yourself as... Um, a nanny. Uh, a nice, yeah, big, um, stout, gorgeous-looking black nanny that they used to have in the South. Probably yes. not anymore. You know, rocking this baby to sleep. 
and it just, that just, I just feel that way when I sing that. So images are very important to me. The images to yeah. yourself. Yeah. And do you I do that? For oh yes, because if I sing Clayton Nestor and she's a horrible woman, I'm, I'm really horrible. <laughs> I can be real down out horrid. <laughs> How much time do you spend actually getting ready for those? I mean, if you're doing a character role in an opera, I mean, do you yeah. get into that character? I get into the character before the director. I was going to say gets into me. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> but, you know, but before he explains what he wants, he sees me doing. Yeah. Because then he's, I say, let me try it for you and just see if this. And he says, that's very good. I went a little bit here, a little less, a little there. But then he just corrects what you, but he said, you're on the right wavelength. And you have to feel that from you. Yeah, your... because the very, I've, I've heard young singers come and, and sing for me, you know, and they want to have some coaching and things. And I was saying, no, 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 you're, you're just, you see, you have to sing it very much lighter. You're a young girl. And they say, yes, but you see, in my voice, I said, honey, you say that to a conductor, he'll <laughs> never hire you again. You've got to learn how to adapt. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of the young talent, you were also in one of your many incarnations, head of the Canada <laughs> Council. Oh, yes. <laughs> which was, I'm sure, a tough job. I enjoyed the whole thing, but I, I was happy when it was over. Yeah. I mean, there you were saying yay and nay to other talented people across this country. Not so much. Uh, the chairman doesn't do that because that's done by committees and things. Right. But, but you're there. You're the you're front always, person. You're always going to government dinners and, and people are saying, oh, and I said, we need more money. You know, we, we, do you realize how many people we turned down? We need more money. And they said, oh, you're always crying for your babies, Maureen. I'd say, you want to say that because you don't have a talented child. Yeah. Or you know what it's like to try to put that child into a position where they're going to grow and be, make you proud of them because they'll become famous if they perform well, but they need to have training. But you were, I mean, you are here today in large mm -hmm. measure because of a benefactor when you were yes. very young. The owner of the Montreal Star, J.W. McConnell, uh, went to the church I was the soloist in, and he used to hear me going up and down there. And... Um, Someone said, oh, well, isn't it a pity, a girl? I got to come from a simple family and lovely parents, but you know, not allowed. And she's at the stage where she needs to go to a better teacher. And uh, so he called me in his office, locked the door. You know, I got a little nervous. And I bet. Went into his <laughs> dressing room, took off his jacket, and came out into the room with a sh jacket like up to here and tweed and not quite meeting in the middle, you know, and everything. And he said, you know, my, when I grew up, my family were poor. My father had died and my... I sold the, the, uh, the uh, Montreal Star. I delivered it in the, in the morning. It's very yeah. early uh, because my mother needed money and I made money for her. Well, this same man was a, a member of the church years and years later that, that I was um, a soloist in. And he'd hear me come, going up the, um, the, uh, in the processional yeah. up to the choir loft. And somebody told him, I said, isn't it a pity because, you know, she comes from a very nice family, but, you know, she's at the stage where she really should go and have a better teacher. She should maybe go to New York or go to Europe or whatever. And so he called me into his office, locked the door, went into his dressing room, came back with this jacket that yeah. goes up there, a, a tweed jacket. He said, but you there, know. there wasn't a check in his hand or anything. No, no, no. But he said, you can have as much money as you want, but stop singing. I said, I don't want to what stop do singing. You mean? He said, to study. So go and study. But I said, no, I don't have to do that. I really have to have a better coach and move on to a better teacher. And uh, he eventually paid for my New York debut, and I've never looked back since. And you've never had a, a Canada Council grant or... No. But you don't begrudge anybody else. No, no. It's so necessary. There's so many people who can't get to the next step because of that. Because you know how a lot of people feel about that, that, you know, money is handed out to artists or writers, writers and, and it's kind of weird and peripheral <laughs> stuff. Yeah, but for all the people you feel that uh, abused mm -hmm. the, uh, the organization and the money, there are those who make you proud because they write a, a novel that you know, gets a, a prize or whatever. The Canada Council is a wonderful organization, and the people that they appoint to the board work very hard. You know, you get applications that are about yeah. three feet high and you have to read them and you have to assess them. It takes you forever to do. So I, the people who do it are... I but know. we don't see the same kind of level of philanthropy either, do we? Of sort of rich benefactors saying there's a very talented the young Marine. Yeah, yeah. Not so, no, not too many. Well, there's so much talent around too, you know, that you're, we don't always hear about people yeah. who give the money. They don't want to announce it because then they'd have mothers knocking at their door saying, would you help my child too, I guess. <laughs> Do any of your kids sing? Uh, well, they, all, all my kids can sing. They're not singers. But um, Linda, 
um, Linda Cash Riley, you know, yeah. used to, who was an actress, very good in California, and my own son Daniel, he is in California, <laughs> and they're both. <laughs> You've got some. <laughs> they're both <laughs> actors. They're both actors, and my, but the rest of my family can sing. We all can sing. But no competing with mom on the. No, stage. they don't want to be in quote singers. Yeah. No. Maureen Forrester is our guest tonight. We're going to pause for a short break and have more conversation and more song right after this break. Through music, through sound, through images, the joys and trials and triumphs, and even the loneliness of fame is a little bit about what interpretations of life is about. These are songs sung by Maureen Forrester, written by David Work, and of course they perform them together, and you're about to go on a tour yes. from one end of this yet country another, to the other. Yet another tour. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Now, these songs that David writes for you, does he just know you so well that he can do that? He can sit and talk to you for 20 minutes and get things out of you you don't really kind of think. He has a song on there called The Shopaholic Samba. <laughs> is this a confession the, we're hearing? The art of looking older than you are. <laughs> Now, why would you want to know how to do that? Well, or the child in me, <laughs> which balances it out. <laughs> and all, they're wonderful songs. Just wonderful songs. Is there really a side of, uh, is there a lonely side to being famous? Yeah, there is. What do you mean? Well, because you, you live alone in hotel rooms. Uh, and that's what you do. You know, you kick off your shoes and turn on the TV and call home to see if the children are all right. And mm -hmm. Because your children at home, I always had a wonderful housekeeper and a nanny for the children and a husband who was there but busy, yeah. uh, but the children had a wonderful life. Uh, but it's the person who is away that is the lonely it's one. It's the lonely one. Yeah, you're missing out all those wonderful growing up years and all the funny little things they do you hear when you go home, but it's not quite the same as seeing it. And you would be on the road days and oh, days, weeks yeah, and weeks yes, at a time. Yes, uh-huh. Yep. And sometimes on other continents, I've been, you know, I've been in all over Europe and Russia and China and yeah. South America. Yeah. So you've written your own biography. I mean, your autobiography. But this yes. is kind of the biography. The musical biography. Music. Yeah. So now there's a song that you're going to do for us, which is entitled on the album, Mother's Maids dot, dot, dot. So what is the dot, dot, dot? You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> or listen. David, are you going to fess up and tell us? Oh, no, 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 no. We'll make there's, you wait for us. There's a word that, 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 one of the words I know is witches, and then there's another one that sort of rhymes with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You're getting close. <laughs> All right. You make your way to the microphone, and we'll <laughs> see if we'll listen carefully yes. to all those lyrics. Yes. <laughs> Maureen Forrester, and this is from Interpretations of a Life. Maureen Forrester singing, of course, the songs of... David Warwick, who was with her at the piano. If you'll indulge me for a moment now, I have a serious point to make. To all the opera composers throughout history, fellows, you have made one large mistake. Let me play the bride Although I've got a lot of passion On stage it's always been denied No voice to lovers are not in fashion You never let me hold the man Although I would be more than willing I always have to hold a fan Or wear a habit Or plan a killing Why? Am I destined to play the nurse to Exenia? Oh, what long game sopranos, the libido and contraltos, neurasthenia. I've played a lot of men for Gluck, decadent kings and aging queens for Handel. Would anyone see it as a fluke if just once I was the cause of the scandal? I've had men at my feet, you know. But composers say, uh, no, 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 you have to play the ante or the jolly green giant. Erda, well, I'm getting defiant. You give me a breath. <laughs> oh, I buggered it up. Sorry. Roll this to fake it, so get on with it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh, dear. Mm, but, um, no, 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 you have to play the ante or the reality. That's when I turn. Okay. okay. Well, we have Pick to it up. You. Pick it up. Just pick it up. Sure, just keep, this is great. <laughs> you never let me play the bride. 
You give me a brother who's an assassin, or a daughter who's just died. As fancies go, I'm always passing. I have to walk off stage alone. Someone with far more past than future. Why not a love song all my own? Let me tug a heartstring and not a suture. Where is fair? I get to play Ulrika. She's a sorceress. The bride may glide, but I have to creep or waddle, even doddle. Oh, it's torturous and bellious and melisande. Genevieve, the queen, I play with bearing, but nevertheless I must despond. It's the princess, not the queen, at whom they're staring. Play Suzuki by her flag, and all too often I've played a guy. And though I've got the notes, you know I'm really a terror. There has been an anatomical error. You never let me play the bride. Yet if I switch, what's there to covet? For even on the Broadway side, I'd be Mama Rose, or that Mrs. Lovett. And so it really does appear that with a voice down in the cellar, I'd be the one to get the gear. While head a high note gets the fella. Ooh, I do. While the Miss Cattershaw or a dying oracle, my, they cry as I give. Final prophecy, insane or allegorical, as mothers, maids, witches, bitches, mediums, nuns, or answer pants. It's obvious I'm highly qualified, but I never, 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 never get to play the bride. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> that is wonderful. No, is it's a this... mouthful, though. <laughs> come and come and sit up here. Just... Now this is really, is it true? Come on yep. back to your, uh, mm -hmm. to your spot here. Is it really true that contraltos, I mean, is this a true yes. story? Yeah, You sure. can't get to do any of the well, sexy Well, you're, 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 you know, you're always the other woman. You're never the soubrette. You're never the, oh, oh you know, soprano who gets all high notes. David, did she complain to you about this in person? That's how you knew to write it? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Now listen. On the other hand, we can sing forever. You see, the worse we sound, the better and more convincing we are That's as an true. old person. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. And to your very own wedding, I might add, you wore black. Yes, I did. So maybe yeah. people didn't think this was an appropriate <laughs> thing for the bride. Well, it was one of those weddings. It wasn't a big wedding. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. We're going to take a short break um, and let Maureen Forrester, witch and bitch. nun and... <laughs> I'm not going to say any of that. She's going to take a short break. We will, and we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> they never let you do the good parts. Yeah, but we, said, we sing longer. That's the main yeah, thing. Yeah, you last forever. Yeah, we can do grandmothers. and. You said, and with each child that you had, you got a half note. Either end of the range, yeah. That it just kept expanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened? I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you suppose, you know, was there some connection? I don't know. I just think maybe you become more relaxed. You're so happy to have babies. You know, I have four daughters and a son. Yeah. And 11 grandchildren. Isn't that 11, wonderful? I know. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And so it just kept adding and you kept, I yeah. mean, your voice just got richer. Well, I suppose, you know, I, as I got older, it changed color and weight. To, yeah. It's a little weightier. There's that color again. Yeah, I talk in colors a lot. And now, I was <laughs> teasing you. I was teasing you, but there were some very, very powerful and poignant moments in your biography that you wrote mm -hmm. about this wedding where you really did get married in a black dress. Yes, I did. To, <laughs> to Eugene. Yeah. To a fellow who, hadn't married, who wouldn't marry you for well, quite some time. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Tell us this story, because you saw him across a crowded room. Is that true? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I was, yes. I went to Ottawa, and uh, I looked across the room, and I said, that's an interesting looking man. That's the man I'm going to marry. And was he younger or older? I mean, did oh, you know he's a lot who he older was? Than, he's a lot older than I am. Yeah? He's about 18 years older than me. <laughs> and he was a performer and a... He was a conductor of the yeah. Ottawa Philharmonic. Yeah. And so did you let him in on this little secret or...? Not right away. <laughs> <laughs> I just worked on it. <laughs> <laughs> but did you really know that you were... I mean, was this some kind of flash yeah. that you were seeing and... Yeah, I had... Well, I had... You know, I wasn't... I didn't have a lot of boyfriends. I was always too busy because yeah. I had church jobs and this job and teas to sing at and all kinds of things. But um, 
I sort of had an idea of the type of man I would like, yeah. strong personality, and um, somebody who wouldn't lean on me, but that I could lean on occasionally, but mm -hmm. we ended up leaning on each other, so you know, I, just, I, looked, I just said, that's the man I'm going to marry. And said about. And when I, I went up to him, that. and somebody said that I had said, he said, well, what do I do with my life? <laughs> <laughs> if you know Eugene, that's what he's like, you know, Eugene Cash. <laughs> That's just amazing. <laughs> now you went. To, uh, he was of. He was. He was Jewish. Yeah. And he had promised his mother that he would not marry mm -hmm. outside the faith. Right. So you became pregnant with Paula, mm -hmm. and he said, "I can't do this." Mm hmm But I, for his sake, I con converted. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. So in the end, you were able to. No. Well, that made it all right, and then we had four more children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until. Until. <laughs> Until you fell in love with a married man on an airplane. That's true. <laughs> the, and he wasn't the pilot. <laughs> and he wasn't the <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> no, it's just reading your, your autobiography. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are fascinating stories because for people who do spend their life on the road, oh, like yes. you do, yeah. uh, and when you're a performer and there are literally men at your feet, as, as mm -hmm. the song would say, it's amazing it doesn't happen more often. Maybe it doesn't, we don't hear about it, yeah. you know, or it doesn't work out, whatever. I, I'm, I can't hide my uh, emotions, that's yeah. what it, so everybody knows what I'm thinking or what I'm doing. And was this love at first sight on the plane, too? Well, he, he sort of, but he turned out not to be the right man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If anything, the perfectly wrong man. <laughs> but your but marriage ended as a result. Our mar yes, I left Eugene. And, uh, but we're... If, I, if there are women listening who are uh, thinking of leaving their husbands, you know, you can get back together again. But if you can't, you must remain friends. We're wonderful friends. We have, you know, five children and 11 grandchildren. Mm -hmm. and, uh, together. If I have a family party, I always invite them to come. Hmm. So I think that's the same way to live. Now, is that because there isn't another man in your life that you're free to do no, that? No, even if there was another man in my life and I was having a, a family, but I would invite him. They're his children, my mm -hmm. children and his children. And he enjoys, you know, being with the family. But he's a very busy teacher. Yeah. And uh, he teaches love. His first of all, his life is the violin. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and he's very good at it. He's a wonderful teacher. So what is your view uh, from your vantage point now on romantic love? I think it's wonderful if it's spontaneous and mm, easy. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can fall in love for a short while and fall out of life with love with someone. But I'm not really looking around right now. I'm busy enough to keep myself yeah. busy. You know. Have you sort of come to the conclusion that you are a loner? I'm not a loner in the sense that I don't like to be with people. I do like to be with people. but. There's something nice, you know, about making your own choices when you want to do something, when you don't, or whatever. And I have an enormous amount of friends. Yeah. And kids. And kids. And grandchildren, and grandchildren that are all around. Yeah. And they don't, as I told you, they call me Graal. And I Graal. And have they forgiven you for all your sins? They don't know about them. <laughs> <laughs> when oh, they're old oh. enough, I'll have another little party and tell them all. So they're not watching television tonight, then? <laughs> My <laughs> sins are <laughs> sins of joy. <laughs> I guess they are, aren't yeah. they? Mm -hmm. And that you are, I mean, I get the sense that that's how you view life. I mean, if there's something there and you want it, then go and grab yeah. it and take it. Mm -hmm. As long as it doesn't belong to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess which was a small problem with the plane, man on the plane to New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you suppose you will just keep performing forever? Yeah, I don't imagine myself not, never being able to sing. I think your, your range changes. Yeah. You know, the high notes are obviously not what they were at one time, and the very low range changes. But you, it gets a little less. But there's always music to be sung. And how many days do you spend on the road now, a year? I don't know. Not as much as I used to. What do you think, David? How many days do you spend? <clears throat> in terms of days, I, yeah. I, I guess uh, 60 of the, of the year, yeah, mm -hmm. 60 days. And when you go on this tour with Interpretations of Life, I mean, mm -hmm. that's going to be right across the country. Yeah, we've done this a fair amount now, and it's, yeah. it, people really like it. This. Oh, it's great. Well, with songs like Well, and because they, they can relate to them, you know, they can all relate to, to now, themselves. Now, most everybody remembers you as the witch in Hansel yeah. and Gretel. They've seen that on television. Lying on my broom and... I think I'm the down. only person in the world that hasn't seen this. Can you still <laughs> do the witch's cackle? <laughs> oh, 
I, if I do, I, may, I hurt my throat a little do bit. Do you though. really? Yeah. Well, we won't have you like, do that. Ah, you know, that screaming. Yeah, well, you know what they're doing? They, they do the turn tourniquet. They, they had me going upside down yes. on a broom, yes. flying through the air and everything, um, through the power of television, of course. Right. Laughing all the time. Oh, didn't right. we tell you that, actually? You're going to be spinning through <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we won't lights. have you do the cackle because we want you to keep your voice. Yeah. We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back in just a moment and continue our conversation with Maureen Forrester. <laughs> Voices, so you don't get the sexy parts. Huh? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but we will last longer. <laughs> you do last longer. Yeah. One of the things that you do these days, uh, monks, you know, in addition to spending all this time on the road, is that you're very involved in the AIDS uh, community and, and working with, yes. uh, with yes, AIDS victims, patients. Well, what, what drew you to that? <laughs> you know, if you've ever gone to a place, a hospice like Casey House, and you see all these wonderful young people, you know, are lying in beds. A lot on the main floor, they're mostly in wheelchairs and some walking around. But they all know their life is coming to an end. It's terminal. And I would go upstairs, especially at Christmas time. I used to do a, a program for them every Christmas, and mm. go upstairs. And it, it, you know, as a mother, it would be, do terrible things to me. But yeah, I try to put that aside, and I'd put my arm around somebody who was almost out of you know. I'd say. Did your mother ever sing something you liked, you know, that you really liked that maybe I know and maybe I could sing for you? And they'd say, oh, I don't know. I'd say, well, maybe this one. And I'd sing Sister Mary or something, yeah. one of the Christmas things I do. And they'd get the most sort of peaceful look over their face and fall asleep. And, but I would call back the next day and say, how's George doing today? Oh, we lost George last night. You know, but then you feel that if anything, you help them on the way. It'll but be more maybe peaceful. that's it. Maybe because of what the music offers. I mean, there is a sense of serenity, a sense of yeah. peace. That and nobody should die alone. Yeah. Nobody should die alone. And, uh, of course, Casey has, is a wonderful and All the hospices are That's wonderful. a hospice in Toronto. <laughs> yes. But you're just about also to do a benefit in, in Halifax called the Ribbon of Dreams yeah, with a yes. lot of other talented people, yes. Tricia mm -hmm. Yearwood and... and uh, well, you know, you just have to, go, you just have to um, realize that they've got to find a cure for this. Mm -hmm. We're losing so many talented, wonderful young people. And they, there's no chance at the moment. They can keep them alive for just a certain time, and then they just go, you know, and it's, yeah. it's such a waste of life. But also, I really feel that I think in the junior classes in school, they start having to teach sex awareness yeah. and protection. What do your own kids say to you about this? Because I know other people who have decided that this is yeah. a calling for them. Mm -hmm. And their own families are afraid when you come back in the door. Oh, gee, we don't want to touch you. We don't know. Oh, you no, know, no, no, no. You don't you get AIDS that way. That? You don't get AIDS from touching somebody like that. People know no. that in yeah. general, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no, no. I think, I think there should be more programs about that. That's saying, I, I go up to an AIDS person, put my hand around their neck. Yeah. And look at them right in the face. You know, that's not how you get AIDS, by breath. Right. But it is important, I guess, that people like you do that. Well, I think more people should do it, too, because um, it's the saddest of terminal parts of life mm -hmm. for the people who are dying of it. And you could think we can go to the moon, we can do all kinds of things, they should be able to soon find, it. at least maybe not to totally cure it, but to keep it at a certain place where it's not yeah. going to grow, you know, or increase. Where do you get your energy to do this? I mean, you work extraordinarily hard. As you say, you've got kids and grandkids. Yeah. You give your time to this. You're, you always seem to be giving back to the community. Well, I've been very lucky in my life. People have been very good to me. And the, the man who owned, as I said, owned the Montreal Star, mm -hmm. gave me the chance in life. I'd never be a singer today without his help at the did beginning. Did that really help form your yes, view of this, that you've got to give? You've got to give back. What you take out of life, you have to put back and, and help somebody else. Sometimes a singer, sometimes somebody who just who's unhappy that you can make laugh a little bit. And your talent is just one of those things that, I don't know, do you find it easy to spread it around? I mean, <laughs> you seem so easy when you get to the microphone, like you really still love doing this. Oh, I do. And the minute I don't like it, I'll give it up. But that Maybe become happened. a trapeze artist or something. <laughs> <laughs> You just want to do that witch scene from Hansel yeah. and Gretel again right. without the technology. Mm, especially turning upside down. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Maureen Forrester will sing with, for us one more time.
Welcome back. We're going to spend some of our final moments with Maureen Forrester tonight, allowing her to l sing us uh, out uh, to the end of our program tonight. Now, this one, Maureen is at the microphone over there. Mon cœur s'ouvre à ta voix. Pretty close. <laughs> do, it, do it for me. Mon cœur s'ouvre à ta voix. She was trying to give me French lessons My in the heart commercial. My heart, sweet voice. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. And with her, of course, on the piano, David Warwick, <laughs> uh, who is playing with us. And you'll be singing this at the uh, AIDS benefit in Halifax, I, think so, I yeah. believe, mm -hmm. as well. Right. Well, we would just love to hear it. We'll sit back and listen. Go yeah. ahead. Thank you. 
Maureen Forrester, accompanied by David Warwick. It is, it's beautiful. Come and sit down. We just have a few seconds uh, Oops. left. I, I knew we'd have trouble with that. Does that, uh, does it move you to tears when you that sing, is. or just everybody else that listens to you? Mm, no, I just think of Samson. <laughs> and Delilah. Yeah, and me, Delilah, singing the Samson. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's a wonderful aria. If you had one song to take away and listen to for the rest of your life on a desert island, what would it be? Oh, that's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> that's very difficult. It would have to be a funny song, I think. Yeah. If you were alone on a desert island, you'd have to you'd be able to amuse it. yourself. Or make one up. <laughs> Maureen Forrester, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you very much for being here. Oh, thank you very and much. And David Work, thank you for thank you. the work tonight as well.